Imagine there was an AI tutor that could help you with whatever you were working on on your computer. Google's AI Studio has a streaming function that can do just this. It's not perfect yet, but we're going to have a look at some demos and you can get a feel for the kinds of things you can do by streaming your screen into the AI. So we're here on aistudio.google.com and the majority of the site is tools that will help developers and help you to be able to do coding. But if we come on the left here to stream, then we get the screen that says stream real time and we've got options of talk, webcam and share screen. If you're on your phone, you can actually choose webcam and you can use the camera on your phone pointed at stuff and ask questions. But if we're on the computer, what we want is share screen. So we're going to click share screen and in addition on the right hand side we want to make sure that the output is audio and text. So we're going to click share screen and then we're going to choose either a window or a entire screen to share. We need to allow it to access our microphone. Okay, how would you translate это Нина into English? This is Nina. That is correct. Would you like me to help you with the next question? Привет, Mark. Does this say teacher Mark? The audio says Privet Mark, which translates to Hi Mark. Can you explain what the highlighted code does? The highlighted code calculates the mean height and sample size for each sex in the Eisen data dataset. After filtering for individuals whose sport is b-ball, would you like a more detailed breakdown of each step? Can you interpret the t-test output? Certainly. Based on the t-test output, there is a statistically significant difference in weight between the sexes. Specifically, females have a significantly lower weight than males. Would you like to know more details from the output, such as the confidence interval or the exact p-value? Yes. The t-test shows a t-value of minus 9.2381 with 197.71 degrees of freedom. The p-value is less than 2.2 times 10 to the minus 16, indicating a highly significant difference. The 95% confidence interval for the difference in means is between minus 18.42168 and minus 11.94038. The mean weight for females is 67.34250, while the mean weight for males is 82.52353. Is there any specific aspect of these results that you would like to explore further? In GIMP. Okay. Have you tried using the Select by Color tool to select the green background and then deleting it? How do I do that? First, select the Select by Color tool from the toolbox on the left. It looks like a hand pointing to a colored square. Then, click on the green background in the image. GIMP will select the area with that color. Finally, press the Delete key or go to Edit and then Clear, which will remove the selected green background. What does the icon look like in GIMP 2.10.30? In GIMP 2.10.30, the Select by Color tool icon looks like a hand pointing to a colored square, and it's located in the toolbox on the left side of the screen. Do you see it there? No. Okay, in the toolbox on the left, can you locate the row of icons that starts with a rectangle and has the Tool Options dock just below it? The Select by Color tool is the fourth one in that row. Do you see it now? It's selected too much. It looks like the selection was too sensitive and selected some of the foreground as well. You can try adjusting the threshold setting in the tool options for the Select by Color tool to make the selection less sensitive. Reduce the number to something smaller and try again. Does that help? Yes. And did it select only the green background this time? Yes, but it missed some. If some green areas were missed, you can try increasing the threshold setting slightly to include them or click on the missed areas with the Select by Color tool to add them to the selection. How can I create a transition between these two clips? To create a transition between these two clips, you can drag a transition effect from the effects library onto the cut point between the clips on the timeline. Where do I find the effects library? You can find the effects library in the lower left corner of the screen. It's located in the same area as the media pool and edit index. Do you see it? Can you guide me to it? You are now in the media section of DaVinci Resolve. To add transitions, we'll need to switch to the edit section. Can you see the icons at the bottom of the screen labeled media, cut, edit? Yes. Please click on edit. Once you're in the edit section, the effects library will be in the top left corner of the screen. It is labeled effects. Do you see it now? Yes. To add the transition, select the effects library tab, then navigate to the video transition section. Choose your desired transition 
and drag it onto the cut point between the two clips in your timeline. Do you see the transitions? Yes. Did I do that correctly? Yes, you've correctly dragged the transition onto the timeline between the two clips. Now, when you play the video, you'll see the transition effect between those two clips. Is there anything else I can assist you with regarding this transition or any other aspect of DaVinci Resolve? Which transition did I select? You currently have the Blur Dissolve transition selected. Is there anything else I can help you with? Can you summarize this article? Based on the article, it discusses a study that explores primary care physicians' attitudes towards the use of artificial intelligence in their field. The study, conducted from June to August 2023, involved surveying 47 physicians in Southern California. The results show that while physicians largely view AI positively, there are concerns about accuracy, bias, workflow, and doctor-patient relationships. The study highlights the need for initiatives to address both technological and people-related concerns in the adoption of AI in primary care. Can you explain these study notes? These notes cover log linear models for two-way tables, which are used to analyze the relationships between two categorical variables. They explain how these models use logarithms to express cell counts as a function of the variables and their interactions. Would you like a more detailed explanation of a specific section, such as the model structure, assumptions, or an example? All of the above. Okay, let's break down the key aspects of log linear models for two-way tables. Should I start with model structure? Yes. The model structure section presents the equation for an unsaturated log linear model with interaction. It essentially models the logarithm of the expected cell counts as a sum of several terms. Would you like me to define these terms? What does that mean? In simpler terms, the log linear model is trying to find a pattern in how often certain combinations of categories from two different variables occur together. Instead of directly modeling the counts, it models the logarithm of those counts. This is useful for several reasons, including dealing with multiplicative effects and ensuring that predicted counts are always positive. When would I use this? You'd use log linear models when you have two categorical variables and you want to understand how they are related to each other. For example, you might use it to analyze whether there's a relationship between a person's education level and their employment status, where both education level and employment status are divided into categories. Could I use a more advanced log linear model for that example? Yes, you could. The log linear model can be extended to include more variables and interactions. For example, you could include demographic variables like age or gender to see if they modify the relationship between education and employment. So this has been the screen streaming from AI Studio by Google. We could see that it actually did a pretty good job on most of the different things we threw at it. Struggled with crosswords, but outside of that, if you need something where you are working on the screen and you just want to be able to ask questions and have it verbalize answers to you, this is really amazing, and it's only going to get better from here. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this one next, where I show you some of the AI communities and sites that I go to to learn about the latest AI tools.